Well, it's time to begin. Hope you're going to have a good weekend. Um, I hope to as well. My grandson, oldest grandson, and two of his roommates are supposed to come spend the weekend with us. So our house will be busy. Today we're starting uh, chapter three, section one. And we're going to be graphing quadratic functions in vertex form. Now, up to this point, we've had quadratic equations in the AX squared plus BX plus C form. And uh, we've been learning with those. There is another form called vertex form for quadratic equations. So that's what we're going to be studying today. And then we'll also be switching back and forth between the two styles. This is the format, f of x or y equals a times quantity x minus h squared plus k. Okay, now this form has some easy, easy uh, ways for us to graph this thing. H is the x value for the line of symmetry and also the x value of the vertex opposite of sine. K is the y value of the vertex. A is just a multiplier, which either vertically or horizontally uh, shrinks or stretches uh, the uh, height of the vertex. Okay, here it just tells you that the vertex is the point HK, the H being opposite of sine. Here is an example. Now, if A is a negative value, that's what this means, then it will open downward. We've discussed that before. That's nothing new. Okay, and here, this is just saying that A is a positive number, so the thing's going to open upwards, okay? Now, it could open upwards from here or here or just about anywhere, but it's just whether it opens upwards or downwards. Now, the easy way to remember that, if A is positive, it's kind of like a drink, a cup that will positively hold water. If A is negative, then it will be inverted and it won't hold water. Now, is that silly? Yeah, probably. But if it's a, if it helps you to remember it, then it's met its goal. Okay, the axis of symmetry is going to be defined by the h value opposite of sine. Here is the axis of symmetry on this one. Here is the axis of symmetry on this one. So now we have an equation. In this case, our A term is positive one. So we know that this is going to open upwards. It says that our X value and our Y value for the vertex is the point three, negative nine, okay? Now, we know it's gonna open upwards because it's positive A, and we know that the vertex is going to be the point zero, negative nine, okay? Now, the other thing that we might want to know, I'm gonna go ahead and put that zero, negative nine in here. 
are, excuse me, three negative nine. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, this is going to be the vertex, and we know it's going up like that. Okay, now the other thing that we might want to know to make graphing this easy so we don't have to plot a bunch of points and so we don't have to convert it to standard form and then factor it is we might want to know the y intercept. So in other words, to find the y-intercept, we replace x with zero in the equation. So we replace this with zero. Zero minus three is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Minus nine happens to be zero. So that gives us the point zero, zero right here is the y-intercept. Now, with that information, if we look at this y-intercept here, there's going to be cause this x value, or h value, I should say, creates a line of symmetry Okay, then I know that if I've got this point here, I've got one over here, the same level and the same number of spaces away from this line of symmetry. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So I've got these three points and I can now graph my quadratic. Okay, here we go. Now, what they've done all of this work down here all of this work down here in this case just to graph that I didn't need to do this. But sometimes it asks you, what are the x-intercepts? Well, if you remember, when you find the x-intercept, you replace y with zero. So here's the equation. Quantity x minus 3 squared minus 9 equals zero. We square this. Okay. And then we've moved nine okay they move they're going to use the principle of square roots instead of squaring this and combining it and factoring it so anyway they're going to take the square root of both sides so they take the square root of this and they get x minus three they they did this and they did this And they get x minus three here, and they get plus or minus three there. Now, what this is saying then is with these two equations right here, you've got x minus three equals positive three, and you've got x minus three equals negative three. This one, you add three, you add three, and you get x equals zero, okay? Here, we add three up to both sides, and we get x equals six. That's where these came from. So what that means is our x-intercepts are the point three, excuse me, the point six and the point zero. And in this case, that agrees with points that we've already found since the y-intercept was on zero. Now, if the y-intercept was anything besides zero, these wouldn't have been the same 
exact points to start with. Now, the last thing they're going to do on this is they're going to graph it. I think. There we go. Okay. So my axis of symmetry, which they've written out, I can erase my scribbles, is the equation x equals three. I like to uh, notate the axis of symmetry with a dashed line, but that's kind of up to you. You don't have to. Okay, we got another problem. This time we have a negative out front. What does that negative mean? That means it's going to open downwards. If I can get my fingers arranged right. What's my vertex going to be? It's going to be the point positive two, negative one. So I can graph that. Positive two, negative one. There's going to be my y-intercept. I know it's going to go downwards. So this thing's going to come out this way somehow. Let's find the y-intercept. Okay. So we replace x with 0. Squared minus 1. And we get the y-intercept is negative 5, which gives us the point 0, 5. So that's the y-intercept. 0, excuse me, negative 5. 0, negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we know this equation is going to go through here and it's going to come over here. Well, my line of symmetry again is right here. So if this is two apart here, then I've got another value that's two apart here. And my graph then would look like notice unless a is something besides one it's always over one down one or over one up one and that would be your graph now let's let them do the work Okay, the vertex, two, negative one, we've got that. It opens downwards, we've got that. They're finding the y-intercept by replacing x with zero. So they substitute in zero here, and they get the negative five, just like I did in the point zero, negative five. Now, they're trying to find an x-intercept. And you can go through this work to do it, but what you'll find out, if you take the square root of this and the square root of that, you get an imaginary number. So there is no x-intercept, but because we know that this opens down and that the vertex is below the x-axis, there's no way that it's going to cross the x-axis, and there's no way it's going to have x-intercepts. So this is a waste of time on this problem, because we know it opens down, and the vertex is below the x-axis. Okay? So there is no x-intercept. And here they're saying 
Once again, my axis of symmetry is two, which I showed you here. And there's the graph. And they picked out their matching point the same way I told you. Your symmetry point. Because a parabola will always be symmetric. Okay, now here's one for us to do. Graph the quadratic function, identify the vertex, x-intercepts, and the axis of symmetry. Well, we're not necessarily going to do them in that order. Okay, so our equation is g of x equals x plus 2 minus 1. All right. So we've got some compute, computation to do. What is our vertex going to be? Our vertex is going to be negative 2 and negative 1. So let's graph that. Negative two, negative one. Looks like my graph may not go far enough that way. All right, so uh, next thing let's do. Well, we know right now that our line of symmetry is going to be right here. is going to be x equals negative two. Now, let's find the y-intercept. We replace x with zero. So zero plus two squared minus one equals Two squared minus one equals four minus one equals three. So that gives me the point zero three for the y intercept. And I'm going to graph that. Okay, the y intercept is zero. One, whoops, zero, three, one, two, excuse me. The y intercept is zero and up three. I can't write on this, but it would be one, two, three. I can't write on the screen up here. All right. But what I do know is it's going to come up like this and head up to that point right there, come up like this and head up to the point right there, okay? We got this point two over, so we're gonna have a point two over, all right? Now, what about the x-intercepts? Well, in this case, you can just tell for the graph, since there's nothing in front of that parentheses, no a term, and this always goes up one and over one, we know that the x-intercepts are gonna be the point uh, one, two, three, negative three, zero, and negative one, zero. So I'm gonna write those down. X-intercepts, I'm trying to stay out of that hot spot are negative three, zero, and negative one, zero, or in other words, x equals negative three and negative one. Well, let's work that just to make sure. So we take the equation, x plus two quantity squared, Minus one equals zero. We'll take this over to the other side. X plus two quantity squared 
equals one. Take the square root of both sides plus or minus. Okay, and so I get x plus two equals positive one, and I get x plus two equals um, negative one. This negative is on the outside of the radical. So square root of one is one and negative. So I work these two problems, minus two, minus two, and I get x equals negative one, okay? Our value there, minus two, minus two, and I get x equals negative three here. So sometimes you can save yourself a lot of work if you know some of these basic reactions of the graphs, okay? Now, if there's an A value in front of that parentheses, then this may not be up one over one or up one over one or down one over one, okay? Then that'll change. But if it's just a one in front of that parentheses, even if it's hidden, then the parabola will always behave that way. Okay, now, this is standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is not zero, okay? A is a real number. Now, what they're wanting us to do is change this form to that form, okay? Well, to do that, we're going to use a shortcut method, jumping to step three. Okay, we know that's a parabola because A is positive. We know it's going to open up, or if A is positive, it's going to open upwards. This is kind of a review of the two slides we saw before. Okay. If A is negative, it goes down. If A is positive, it goes up. Fill the cup, empty the cup. Now, here we go. When it's in this format, to find the line of symmetry, we use this formula. This is a, this is a value you need to memorize, okay? Negative B over 2A. Negative B over 2A is the way we usually do it instead of just leaving the negative sign out here. Like I said, usually we do it that way. But either way, you'll get the same result. Now, that's the equation for the axis of symmetry, that will also give you the x value for the vertex. So then you take whatever x value you get here, substitute it into the equation and find out what y is, okay? To find the y coordinate, then you take this as your x value and this notation just means you're going to take this for the x, and then you're going to take that value to get the y. Now let's go to a real problem so we can see what this is talking about. Determine the vertex. Okay. Here's our negative b over 2a. So we've got a negative 48 over 2 times Th negative three because a is negative three. We simplify this two times three is ne negative three is negative six. The negatives cancel and you get eight. 
So the x value of the y intercept is eight. Now, if we replace x with eight, that's what this is saying. We're going to retake the equation and we're going to substitute eight for the x value here and here. Okay. First, we have to square this eight, 64, and 64 times three. And then we have to take eight times 48. And then we've got the 165. So these are some numbers that you might want to do on the calculator. Okay, so this whole thing they're saying is equal to 27. Now, with that, that means if x is 8, then y is 27. Now, I want to take just a moment and do that calculation on the calculator for you. Okay, so we're going to replace x with 8. So negative 3 times 8. Whoops, I've got a yeah, I've got the parentheses there. And hit the square button. Okay, now plus 48 times 8 uh, minus 165. is 27, okay? That's the nice thing about this Casio FX series is what you put in is exactly what you get, okay? So now we'll go back to the slideshow. Got to go back through those first steps again that far. Okay, so here is our vertex. Now, look at this equation here, look at that equation there. Notice the A in the one up above is negative three. The A here is still negative three. Here is your x value, opposite of sine, and here is your y value, same of sine. So it's very easy, or fairly easy anyway, to convert from this format to that. Now there is another way called completing the square, and it's kind of a pain. And we don't do that in this course. Okay, so at any rate, what are your steps here to convert this to vertex form? Well, first you use the negative b over 2a to get the value for x. Substitute in, get the value for y. Then take your a term, quantity x minus the x value, x value squared plus the y value, okay? So that's kind of a shortcut way of doing this. Okay, let's do this problem. What's my a value gonna be? Negative one, b, negative four, c, negative seven. So, Here's my formula for the vertex, getting the x value in the line of symmetry. So we're going to have negative b over 2a. In this case, we're going to have negative negative 4 over negative 2 times 1. 
Okay, so I've got to do this myself. Okay, to find the vertex, first we find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so x equals negative that over two times negative one because there's a negative, there's a one hidden in front of that x squared, which equals positive four over negative two equals negative two. So x equals negative, x equals negative two is the line of symmetry. Now, let's find the vertex. We're going to take that negative 2 and substitute it into the equation. Okay. And that equals a First, I've got to square this, which is four, so negative four plus eight minus seven. Okay, y equals so y equals in this case negative four plus eight is positive four minus seven is negative three. Okay, so my vertex then is the point negative two for the x value and negative three for the y value. So what have we done? We've gotten the, the vertex there. Now let's find the y-intercept. Here, let's break this down over here. To find the y-intercept, what do we do? Re we replace x with zero. So negative zero squared minus four times zero minus seven equals seven. Okay, so the y-intercept is the point zero seven. By the way, did we really need to do these two things? No, they're always going to wipe out. Just look and see what the last number is for the y-intercept. In this case, that negative seven. Almost made a blunder. So we've got all of the information now. We can convert this to vertex form if we want to. We don't need to, but we can. And we can graph the thing. Okay, it says that our x value is negative two right here. Uh, and our y value on the vertex is, uh, what did I say it was? negative three, okay? So right here is the vertex. Going through the X value of that vertex is the line of symmetry, which is useful for graphing. The Y intercept is the point zero seven. Zero negative seven, excuse me. So if this is three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now this is two places over here. So there's got to be a matching point two places over here. This is the y-intercept. So we can draw this graph just based on that. 
Do we need to even try to find the x-intercepts? No, because there won't be any, because this thing opens downwards and it starts below the x-axis. So any x-intercepts would be irrational numbers. Imaginary numbers, I said that wrong. Okay. Erase. By the way, sorry about the short notice on canceling class yesterday. Um, like I said, at 1125, is when the internet went down for all of it, WSU and, and or at least all of Jar Jabara Hall. I don't know about other buildings, but I was told that it was bigger. Okay, so we've covered here, although applications are not a requirement for this course, I do wanna show you two things real quickly, two problems, I'll let you read this. Okay, quarterback throws a football with a certain velocity and at a certain angle. Okay, from a height of five feet, this is the quarterback right here, standing here. He throws it at a 25 degree angle. Okay, and it goes up and it comes down. Now, Somebody spent enough time to figure out from that information and using trigonometry that we've got that equation right there that would generate that, that parabola, okay? Obviously that parabola has some modifiers on it. Now, what's gonna happen here? Well, It asks us these questions. When will the ball be at its maximum height? When will it, what will be the maximum height of the ball? Okay, when and what? And how much time to get to the receiver if the receiver catches it three feet above the ground? You can't see it out here, but the receiver bent down like this to catch it, three feet. Well, you graph this thing and it looks something like this. The highest point, all you do is trace the graph down and see what the X value is. That's also your line of symmetry. Your vertex here, the Y value is the maximum height. Okay, for when it is over here, you just go over and see uh, when y is three, read across and see where the graph intersects and read the x value then to find out how hard it's gone. Well, this one's kind of got nasty numbers in it, but we would work it just like all those others that we've started with, okay? Now, something important, this is also a curve similar when you take a pill, when you take a pill, here's zero out, and you have zero milligrams of medicine in your body. And you take that pill, and the amount of medicine that gets in your bloodstream goes up to a certain maximum point, and then it starts wearing off. Okay, well, if you find this point, that'll tell you maximum effectiveness. That's how they tell you, you can only take one every four hours or whatever. They're expecting it to completely wear off by four hours. Now, when is the medicine doing you the most good? At whatever the vertex is. So follow the line of symmetry down and that's, 
when you've got the maximum amount of effect of the medicine inside you. So that's kind of a practical application of this stuff. Uh, this is also basically the process uh, in the movie October Sky, where the high school boys doing a rocket project launched one. They were accused of setting a forest on fire. They said they didn't do it and they proved it by finding out how far the rocket should, should travel this total distance, okay? And uh, then they did a search and found out that their rocket was not what started the fire. Okay, so we're gonna begin on section 3.2. We won't get it done. Uh, Part of section 3.2 is on your homework this weekend, so we'll get as much done as we can. Okay, here are the different objectives. Some of this I've already taught you. I've taught you the end behaviors. This is a general polynomial now. Okay, if it's a quadratial, quadratic, quadratic, we have a x squared plus b x if that's square this is just one two minus one is one or no power and here a x two less a to the x to the zero is just one Okay, so this is structured similar to what we have having. What are these numbers on here? This just means the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and the last one. And the last one is always the y-intercept. I think I've already taught you that. Now, if the power on the first term is even, Two, four, six, eight, ten, so on. Then, and if A is positive, all this is saying is it's going to go up on each end. Okay, now I've been using this symbol on parabolas because on parabolas there are only two upwards or downwards motions. Now, when we get up to three or four, sometimes they have additional bumps in between the outside behaviors. What we're talking right here is the far outsides of whatever power you've got, if it's even. They'll begin going up, they'll end going up. If A is a positive number. Okay, this one right here possibly could be a one, two, three, fourth or sixth dimension, even though this one didn't cross the x axis. Here, one, two, three, four, probably a four. Here's a two. What if A is a native number? Everything I've said about this is true, except it's going downwards, whether it's a second degree, third degree, fourth, uh, second, fourth, sixth. Okay, here's probably a fourth degree. Here's probably a sixth degree. Okay, now, what are these saying? That's saying that these two are heading towards infinity is all that that's saying. Okay, this is heading to infinity horizontally. This is heading to infinity vertically. And again, we've seen these same pictures. And this one is just saying it's going towards negative infinity both ways and out and down. Now, Here's an equation in standard form 
five. There. Fifth power, A is one. A sub n minus one is negative five. A sub n minus two is four. In other words, back here, when I showed you this, these terms for the A's were just locating which one it was in order. Okay, so we're back to this again. This time we've got a fifth degree, an odd power on the leading term. So we're not going to have this motion. Fifth degree or any odd power will always go down that way and up this way if A is positive. The first one. Okay. We'll call that A sub n. An odd number power will go this way and that way, excuse me, this pin's dying on me, okay? If the first term is negative. Okay. We've discussed this before. If the first term is negative, then it goes left or right down. If the first term is positive, it goes left or right up. Okay. But these are tricks that will help us in graphing. Okay. Now, there are some things on this one that are also shortcuts. Notice I've got an X in every term, so I can factor out an X. Okay, they're saying that A is positive, the power is odd, so it's going to have that kind of a notation, what I just told you. Here's a problem. This is an already factored problem. They factored a common term of two out of it, and then an X plus minus five, and an X plus three to the third power. Okay. Well, what is the overall power of this? Three, four, because there's a hidden one right here. So overall, this is a fourth degree power. The leading term is negative. So what kind of a general shape is it gonna have? Down like this. That means that this thing's gonna uh, end up going that way and end up going this way in some manner. Now, it's more to it than just that. This simply is going to tell us that it goes downwards with a multiplier of two. This tells us that we have a value of x equals five. This one tells us we have a value of x equals negative one, but that is a third degree. Okay. Now, let's plot this x equals 5 right there. Let's plot this x equals negative 1 right there. Now, what do we know about this thing since it's a fourth degree power? We know that this has got to go up that way. We know that this has got to go up that way. Do we know what goes on in between there? Nope, not really, except for one thing. Because this is an odd number, that also is something called multiplicity. 
And if it's an odd number multiplicity, then that tells us that this point is going to cross for an odd multiplicity Okay, now this one is also going to be a crossing one. Why? Because there is a hidden one right there, which is an odd number. Now, if either one of those were a two, if either one of those were a two power or a four power, an even power, then that would be called even multiplicity. And what that indicates is that the line comes down, just touches and changes direction, even. Odd tells us that the line comes down and crosses. Okay. Now, I've just jumped ahead a couple of, of uh, segments in this, but in terms of helping this graphic. Now, how do we get this stuff between here and here? We need to do an X, Y axis and plot points, okay? And that there's no easy way around it. The only other thing we could do is we could find out the Y intercept one cubed is one times negative five times negative two. And that would give us one point on this to give us an idea how far this goes down before it starts jumping. But we'll talk about that more on Monday. So for now, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, mine's going to be interesting with the with the uh, my grandson and his two buddies there all weekend. So anyway, have a good weekend and we'll see you Monday.